Now, our next Neighbor to Neighbor presentation is on mealybugs. And Christina is going to talk to us about that. And I think they look disgusting. She has some great disgusting pictures, but she loves the look of them. So let's <laughs> see what Christina has to say about mealybugs. Well, when you first see a, you know, a mealybug infest in a infestation on your plant, it's not going to look like this picture. Uh, this is obviously seen through a very thick hand lens and you see the no kidding bug. And here it kind of looks like a plush stuffed animal, doesn't it? It almost looks cute like you can pet it. But um, when you have a mealybug infestation, it does not look like this. So let's move over to the next slide. You'll see that on that one leaf there, there's a little bit of white dust. You'll start to see it a little bit more. The picture in the inset, you see where it kind of looks like it's more dusty. Might be even confused with a little bit of a fungal problems um, on your plants. But if you have a, a damp finger and you are unable to wipe the white dust off of the plant and it seems a little bit more waxy, that could be indicative of uh, mealybugs. Um, but of course, take a look at this. I mean, they're everywhere. It almost looks like white scale. And if you are patient and you hold uh, a plant, like in this case with the underside up, um, you might even see them move a little bit. So um, the picture in the inset, you see some of the nymphs as well as some of the more mature mealybugs, but you also see where they are getting off that waxy coating of theirs. We'll move on to the next slide. So mealybugs are covered with this powdery wax. They're actually pink bodied insects, a soft body, but that wax really protects them. Um, if you do touch them, they can be a little on the hard to crush side, I've experienced. Um, the body starts to taper at the tail. Uh, they may have waxy tufts around their body margin and have, this is what's unusual, different species of mealybugs. They can even have several tails at their rear end. Um, I've plucked them off of my goji berry plant outside, not the ones inside, and they were, no kidding, fluffy. They looked like little white balls, and it was because they had these several tails. Um, mealybugs can be found at rest. You know, they're, they're not moving. They're just stuck on your plant or slowly crawling on the undersides. You might fall the, find them on the stems and flowers or even on the outsides of pots. It might look like dust or dust bunnies even kind of cluttering uh, on your indoor pots. But look more closely because it might not be. It could be the mealybugs. Um, they have a cottony white wax that is usually the first sign of their presence. Um, they damage the plants by sucking the lifeblood from the plant. Uh, the feeding from the mealybugs can result in yellowing of leaves, stunting the plants, die back, and it can cause death when the plants just can't recover on their own. Uh, mealybugs secrete honeydew, and that supports the growth of black city mold on plant parts. That said, um, you might actually see, uh, because they're feeding on the phloem and they produce the honeydew that causes that city mold, the sugar loving ants tend to protect the mealybugs from their enemies and they could then move into some of the plants and uh, as they benefit from the honeydew. So that could be another indicator. I see the ant problem um, on my outdoor plants. Um, if I have mealybugs. But then again, I've never had an infestation outdoors. Um, so next slide. If you take a look at the picture on the left, you see how the plant's really wilted. It, it looks like the life has been zapped from it. And that's because these mealybugs have sucked away the phloem. Um, on the right image, you see that black soot which is an indicator too that something is going on. And on top of that black soot, you see the little white waxy bits. And again, another indicator of mealybugs. Next slide. 
On the left, you see an orchid that has some weird spots. And you may be familiar with your orchid as having a very solid color green leaf. And uh, all of a sudden now it's got these little patches that seem unusual for your otherwise healthy plant. And if you are careful to kind of peek down between the leaves or at the base of the leaves, you might actually see where the problem is coming from. And the mealybugs like to hide and uh, tuck themselves into the tight parts of the plant. So if you look at the plant on the right, um, this is a shrimp plant. And at first glance, you might not see these mealybugs, but if you start to just gently pull the leaves away from each other, you'll see how the mealybugs can conceal themselves up and down the stem or under the leaves, under um, where buds are and so forth. Next slide. So we mentioned ants earlier. Ants are an indicator that mealybugs could be a problem because they are benefiting from that honeydew. But some bugs are actually natural predators and will help keep some of the mealybugs in check. And that's what I've noticed with my outdoor plants has occurred. So the spiders were keeping them in check. Um, I have not experienced the predator wasps with mealybugs. I've experienced them other parts of my garden. Um, I find the image on the left really fascinating. If you can imagine the size of this little mealybug, teeny tiny. And inside that mealybug is a parasitic wasp. It's ready to emerge. And it's, it's essentially eating the bug from the inside out. And uh, that's a good problem to have if you don't want mealybugs. Uh, so an indicator of this happening is the image on the right. Um, the Alabama Cooperative Extension um, has been looking into some of the natural predators of these little buggers. And you'll see uh, under a hand lens, there are holes in those mealybugs. And that is an indication of those predator wasps. Next slide. We don't usually have a lot of predator wasps inside. Probably don't have as many spiders in most of our houses to control these mealybugs. So there are things that we can do to manage and mitigate mealybug problems. Uh, the first being not over watering. Do not over fertilize either because they are attracted to soft plants and high nitrogen levels. You can also, if you happen to find a plant that has a relatively light infestation of mealybugs, you can wash them away. They can be dislodged with a steady stream of water and you can repeat that as often as you can or as, um, as long as the infestation is not very heavy. Um, another good management plan is insecticidal soaps. You can use those on your plants. Um, there are a number of recipes that you will find online, but we master gardeners discourage uh, people from using the recipes because you never know how the ingredients in those homemade concoctions might actually affect the plant that you have. A lot of our household plants are very sensitive and our dishwashing detergents, for instance, that might be an ingredient in one of those homemade recipes uh, could be too strong, just too much and just kill your plant. So go with uh, one of the insecticidal soaps that may be recommended by one of your reputable gardening centers and apply it only as directed. Another alternative uh, or another management measure is neem oil. And neem oil is becoming really popular. Um, it is a systemic indoor plant insecticide that can be watered into the plant. It can be watered around the roots. So if you water it or put it onto the exterior of the plant, it starts to protect from the outside, but through the roots, it takes it up systemically and start, the plant starts to protect itself using that neem. Um, use it, of course, only according to label instructions. Um, in addition to the insecticidal properties, neem is also a fungicide. It has a lot of systemic benefits, meaning that the plant absorbs it, it controls the insect, insects that it doesn't directly contact. Um, according to the Environmental Protection Association, neem oil is safe for use on vegetables and food plants as well as ornamentals, but do look on the labels before you apply as to how many days you might need to wait before actually uh, uh, 
consuming your vegetables that may have had the neem application on them. Um, the University of Maryland Cooperative Extension recommends dipping a cotton swab in household rubbing alcohol and dabbing it on the individual mealy bugs to control light infestations. You can imagine that that'd be very time consuming if you had a very heavy infestation. Um, be careful not to get the alcohol on the leaves of the plants because plants are usually sensitive and they can be damaged by that. Next slide. Uh, you can also check your plants on a regular basis for the presence of mealybugs. If you have a light infestation, you feel like you were able to really get that under control, they could come back. So um, if they have been parasitized, they may be darker in color, they may have exit holes, um, they may be visible where the parasites um, have emerged. Uh, you can kind of take a look at your plant and see how many dead mealybugs do I have versus alive mealybugs? And, you know, assess, do I need to continue management or can I let the, the plant recover? Maybe pick off some of the dead ones. Mealybugs are really difficult to control. Uh, you can isolate infected plants so the infestation doesn't spread. Um, for heavy infestations, you can spray the plants thoroughly with the insecticidal soaps um, or a registered houseplant spray, of course, you know, keep in mind, again, some of our houseplants in particular are very sensitive. Be sure to follow all the directions carefully and make sure that the plants and the pests are on the label for use. Multiple applications um, may be necessary to control mealybugs. And uh, again, use the insecticidal soap only as directed. And after treating, monitor your plant for mealybugs each time that you water because again, that retreatment might be necessary. But if it's only a light infestation after you've been able to really manage, perhaps you just need to rinse off the plant, put it under running water, tilt it, try to contain some of that potting soil so that it doesn't go down the drain as well, but um, remove what newer uh, mealybugs start to appear. Next slide. There should be one more cute slide. Yes, we're because of... there's there your we go. I with those disgusting mealy bugs. <laughs> <laughs> they look soft, but they're not. I, I don't know if you've ever uh, encountered them. They're a lot like scale, and they can be uh, difficult to pluck off your plants sometimes. But uh, particularly if they are sucking the phloem out and actively engaged in um, leaching <laughs> onto your plant. Okay, Amanda, do we have any questions in the chat box? Yeah, there's nothing in the chat box, but I actually have a question because yeah. I've, I've dealt with scale a lot. I've never dealt with mealybugs, but they, you, know, you just mentioned they, they seem to be similar. And I'm wondering, I know with scale, there are certain times in their life cycle that they're more susceptible to, to treatments. Is, is that true of mealybugs too, or can you spray them with insecticidal soap anytime? You should be able to spray them anytime. They are related to scale and they are often mistaken for a type of scale. And even worse, they coexist. So oh. sometimes you will have a plant and you see the darker scale and you see what looks like a light scale and it may be mealybugs. It's about the same size and they hang out together. Okay. 